should understand it. And I want to be able to speak freely amongst you. What does he say? The patriarch David is what? Well. So you want to start all over again and keep reading it. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us this day. Now, did David ascend? Now, wasn't David called a man after God's own heart? Yes. Yeah. Now, did David sin? Yes. But was David's sin forgiven him? Yes. And was David saved through Christ? Yes. So, did David ascend into the heavens? No. Can you prove that through Scripture? Yes. You got that, Ricky? Yeah. Want to read it? For David did not ascend into heaven. Stop. Verse 34. Does that get any plainer? What does it say? So where's David at right now? Sleeping. Peter said it earlier. He's dead, and his tomb is with us to this day. Okay? So he's sleeping in Christ. So he has not ascended into the heavens. Right? I'm not sure how you build an entire doctrine on just a couple sets of verses when you have very clear verses that speak otherwise. But in the end, you always got to go back to Genesis and ask yourself, who told the truth and who lied? God said, if you sin, you will die. And the devil said, if you sin, you will not die, but you will be like God. First Timothy tells us God is the only one that has immortality. The churches today teach that you have immortality. Are they teaching the word of God? Or the doctrine of the devil. You've got to understand this because, again, the deceptions that come from a false understanding of the state of the dead are very dangerous, very powerful. Okay, so you read that text, Ricky. Was there more to read or was that it? Um, well, it, it, it says, uh, no, that actually happens in it. Okay. I mean, it does have more to the, to the verse. Well, let's look really quick, because my time is running out, at Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Back in the Old Testament, Daniel chapter 12. Let me towards the back. <coughs> Daniel tw chapter 12. I told you it was in Daniel 13, would I be correct? No. Yeah, because it ends at 12, right? All right. And there are many thinking, I thought you were supposed to end at 12. <laughs> okay, verse 13. Now, what was Daniel's relationship with God? Was it good? Didn't God send an angel to tell Daniel, you are most beloved? Right? So I want you to think about Daniel's relationship with God. If anybody would have been able to be accepted into heaven, a death to be Daniel, right? But what happened to Daniel? And what did the Bible tell him would happen to him? Daniel 12, 13, the very end of his book says, But you go your way till the end, for you shall what? Rest. Rest. Does it mean he was tired and he needed to go to sleep because of all the visions he had? <coughs> what it meant is that he would die. He would rest, that he would see these things happening, that it would come in a future time. But listen, even though you sleep in death, that won't be the end for you, okay? Because Jesus will come, and he will raise the dead. But you, go your way till the end, for you shall rest, and will, what's the next word? Arise. Arise to your inheritance. When? At death? In the end of the days. Now, some will say that was the end of his life, but when you take all these verses that I gave you, and you start to see a clearer picture of when this happens. So i got a question for you. Do you want me to continue this once I preach again? Because uh, Lester's going to be preaching next week, and I've probably got another 20 verses to show you. Okay? Yes. Yes. Then my good friend Dan's going to be preaching the week after that, <coughs> and then I will pick this up the third week. Yes, Gary. Well, you were talking earlier about uh, the 
Satan and how he is going to have something to unite the majority of people and it seems like the state of the dead has been perpetuated and a lot of churches believe it. They Plus it's comforting to the people that have lost loved Love. ones. I have this really good friend that I've known since third grade. She, uh, she's been a teacher her whole adult life. She had six children, three from her first, three uh, girls from her first marriage, three boys from her second marriage. Uh, a year ago, one of the boys died, and uh, he was in California. Hold on, man. Do you have that battery operated mic back there? No. Where's that? I'm gonna give it to you so you can speak into it so everybody can hear you. Because um, it's a good. I know what you're going to say, and it's good. Everybody needs to hear it. Like I was saying, she had uh, six children, three girls, three boys. One of the boys died. He was living in San Diego. It took a while to get his body back. Well, she's from Missouri. It's where we all grew up. Mm -hmm. The body was flown back to Missouri. They had a funeral for him. Oh, let me mention, this lady is no dummy. She's got three doctorates and two masters in education. Mm -hmm. They were, after the funeral, they were all in her home, in her living room. Oh, and one of the daughters is a 40-year-old, she's 41 now, but she's a special needs girl, lady. She does not speak. She's never spoke her whole life. When they were all gathered together in her living room, this girl who has never spoken said in her bro dead brother's voice, don't worry, I'm all right. She said it was the creepiest thing she'd ever heard. She knew that it wasn't her son speaking, but a lot of people would believe oh, yes. that it was. When you experience something like that, it's very hard to go against what your senses have just showed you and the overwhelming feeling that you have. I told you last week that the pastor that was my mentor, his wife died, he went home after the funeral, fell asleep in the chair like he does all the time, and she came and touched his shoulder and spoke to him. And he opened his eyes and he saw her, and it took him a minute to gather his senses and he called the name of Jesus and she disappeared. There are so many stories that I could share with you. Demonic forces and demonic power is real. You need to understand that. The deceptions that they try to pull over on God's people are real. And they're powerful. And unless you are a real student of Scripture, you will be deceived. And as we get closer and closer to the end of time, for Jesus to come back, those deceptions will get stronger and stronger and harder and harder to try to explain unless you have a firm foundation on the Word of God. She said that he spoke and acted, in, or the, the girl spoke and acted in the same way that her dead son had always acted. The book Great Controversy, you sent me that chapter, has a chapter on modern spiritualism. And she goes into great detail about uh, its effects. The, the, part that will play in end time events and gives great warnings for God's people to be on guard by knowing the truth of scripture. Okay, well like I said, I will finish this up. Well, I don't know if I'll finish that because I still have a lot of scripture, but we'll continue on. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 432.
brothers and sisters, let us bow our heads as we close this service. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to look deeply into your word concerning the state of the dead, what happens to us. Father, I pray that you will continue to enlighten our minds, that you will help us to be worthy students of your word, that you will continue to grace us with your truth, with your presence, and with your power. Father, use us and help us to proclaim the three angels' messages to prepare people for Jesus to come back. Father, we long for that day. May we see it. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.